lovers, welcome to our channel, Fly With The Dashes. If you don't already know us, my name's Amber and behind the camera is Billy and together we want to help you get the most out of your private pilot's license. So over the next six months we're going to be dropping in on 35 airfields to bring you honest reviews about the runways, things to do whilst you're there and most importantly the food as it's all about good airfield grub and helping you plan your next cross-country adventure. So like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram and stay tuned for the next episode of Good Airfield Grub Review. Firstly, I just want to say sorry guys for the delay in getting this video out. Sadly, I had a little accident recently, but I am back to full health now. It was non-flying related, but I have lots of videos to catch you up on, so stay tuned. Whether you call it sleep airfield or sleep airfield, I'm sure there's an argument to be had, but that's where we went this week for the Sleep Kosh 2022 fly-in. Sleep is a lovely little airfield located around 30 nautical miles south of Liverpool and just within the Shawbury Mats. Gliding activity out of Turnhill can get very active, so definitely keep your eyes peeled when on approach. Sleep has two active runways, with runway 0523 being 799 metres by 43 metres and runway 1836, 775 metres by 18 metres. As I knew there was going to be wine available that yeah, obviously required sampling at lunch, uh, I decided to fly in so Billy would fly us home again. Uh, I did opt for an overhead join and I did so at 2,500 feet as it was over 300 aircraft flying in that day. So I just wanted to make sure I could really visualize the whole circuit and see where everybody was. Whilst on downwind and after confirming number two to land, we did get a little bit of a shock from someone who wasn't on sleep radio on a long final and apparently completely oblivious to everybody else in the circuit. Luckily, Billy managed to spot him, so we extended downwind and then just tucked in behind him and the landing went smoothly. We followed the truck up to the overflow parking area and although we taxied as carefully as we could, sadly we did pick up a little stone chip on our prop, which I'm a bit sad about. So if you do have to park in the overflow at Sleep Airfield, definitely be mindful of that. After shutting down and grabbing a few snaps, we hopped a ride in the vintage Ford truck and headed to the control to pay our landing fee. Standard fixed wing landing fee is just £10. pretty early at Sleep Airfield, it was already absolutely rammed. It was great to see such a good turnout for the day, because if we don't support events like these, we will lose them. This video would definitely be a whole lot longer if I hadn't accidentally deleted around a hundred photos from the day, so you'll just have to take my word for it that there was lots and lots of different aircraft on display, and there was lots of overhead aerobatics happening, it was absolutely brilliant. The sun was shining, the spinners were polished, it was glorious. After catching up with a mate who is based at sleep, we finished looking at all the other planes and then headed to the on-site museum to check that out. And just like Old Warden was, it was room after room of displays. A real TARDIS, it just kept going and going. There was so much to look at. And now, don't want to share too many pictures to give away too much, but definitely check it out yourselves. It was great. So among the many, many photos I stupidly managed to delete were of the control tower, the live band that they had playing on the day, the food truck, the pop-up bar, all the real good stuff you would have liked to have seen. So again, really, really sorry about that, guys. Me and technology are just not friends. After finishing up at the museum, we met up with our friend Philip, who has a chipmunk at Sleep Airfield, and it was Billy's turn to go for a flight. 
after pre-flight checks we waved him off and me and my other passenger went off to check out the lunch truck. for food was getting bigger by the minute so we decided not to wait till they got back from flying and just jumped in the queue straight away. So this is going to be another two-part video because on event days Steep Airfield have a catering truck that they use and when we come back again we do want to check out the on-site Pegasus Cafe. As the queue for food was so long I left my passenger in the queue and I nipped to the bar to get us some in-queue refreshments. Really glad I did because the sun was baking down on us and literally Billy and Philip had time to fly all the way to Wales and enjoy all the views over Wales before we even got our food. Thankfully, as you can see, it was definitely worth the wait. It was absolutely delicious. I chose the chicken fajita folded wrap and I did upgrade to the sweet potato fries, you know, trying to be healthy, apparently. Billy and our other passenger both went for the burger, but one had bacon, one had chorizo, and they both reported that considering it is from a food truck, it was seriously good quality. Not sure, but it was probably a combination of the sun, the beautiful aerobatics while we were munching our delicious food, or the three glasses of wine I was down at that point, but I was having a fantastic day. This guy? Th this guy, not so much. If you'd like to stay up to date with what the best UK airfields have to offer, then simply like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, and then stay tuned for the next episode of Good Airfield Grub Review. Fly safe, everyone.